Every once in a while you come across a, um, a piece of scripture that is appointed for a Sunday and it's, it's, um, there's way too much. And so it's uh, challenging for me, at least, to kind of narrow things down and understand where this is leading me. And today is one of those uh, passages where you could have gone in a variety of different directions. But as I reflected on it, what I came up with was the thing that jumped out at me, and this is a, it's a process, Lectio Divina, where you read it over and over again, and what stays in your heart, what stays in your head. And what it was for me this, this week was the line, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. For those of you at home, I hope you can see that. What is it? Peace sign. Does anybody know where it came from? It wasn't just an insignia painted on the side of a Volkswagen bus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It had to do with nuclear disarmament. It was designed by a man by the name of Gerald Holton during the 1958 Soviet uh, Cold War crisis and it was a British campaign for nuclear disarmament and in it there's two what are called sephamores and those are the signs the, the vertical sign is the Greek insignia for D the letter D the diagonal signs are the Greek letters for N nuclear disarmament just an FYI a little trivia you can use that someday somewhere And when we think of that sign, we think of things like nuclear disarmament, cessation of war, cessation of conflict, either on a global scale or a community scale or a local scale or a personal scale. And in doing some reading, I came across this item that suggested that over the course of recorded human history, there has never been a time on recorded human history where there has not been some kind of conflict going on somewhere on the globe. I suppose we could say that's part of our human condition, our frailty, our weakness, our vulnerabilities. So when I hear Jesus say, peace, I leave with you, my peace I give to you. When I hear him say when he appears to his disciples in the upper room, peace be with you. It's one of my favorite lines in scripture because it, what it does within me is it creates a feeling of peace in my heart. It creates the sense of anticipation and I think the peace that Jesus offers when he says this is more than the absence of something negative. Indeed, I think it has its own presence and gravity. When someone reports feeling at peace, I've felt that in my life. You feel peace, there's a kind of a... Like everything's okay. Like there's a, everything's connected. Everything is grounded. There's a feeling of just awesomeness. Regardless of what may be going on externally. That when we feel that way, I think we're reporting this, not just more the absence of conflict, but it testifies to, to a wholeness the rightness of life. It's the harmony with ourselves and with those around us. Peace connotates a sense of contentment, but even more fulfillment, a sense that in this moment, one is basking in God's presence. And that can come even in spite of hardship, struggle, conflict, and disruption. 
Think again of the context in which Jesus says these words at this time. Jesus is with his disciples. He's brought them together. This is the night that he is to be betrayed, arrested, scourged, and ultimately crucified. And yet he says to his disciples, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. He not only senses the peace of God, but he gives it and shares it with his friends. And this kind of peace is a gift of God. It is something we cannot attain of our own free will. It is not something we can seek to acquire. It is a, a gift freely given. And we sense this sense of peace when I believe we give over to God a certain amount of control of all the things that we worry about and that keep us up at night and awake. Hi, Graham. <laughs> we give up control of the things we worry about and the pressures that exist in our lives. Not that we surrender responsibility to all those things going on and swirling around it in our world. Not that we give that up, but we recognize there are limits to what we can affect or change. The sensing of these limits, we place ourselves and our loved ones and our fortunes and our future in God's hands. And that's the key, is giving up the control. And I know I am a big control freak at times. And I find that I can do everything and fix everything and make everything go, feel better and go away. And I should be able to. And why do I feel this way? And jeepers! We're not in control. And once we realize that, we hand over. And when we hand over, we open ourselves and our hands to receive the gift that God is giving us that sense of peace, freely given. God's response to us happens when we open ourselves to the, the gift and the invitation to be open to receiving it. Now, the second part of what Jesus just said was in this reading is, I do not give to you as the world gives. Indeed, one might wonder if the world sometimes gives it all, especially these days. All too often, we see that the rules of the world seem to be that we must earn everything that is worthwhile, that we need to look out for ourselves, that survival of the fittest, that there's simply not enough to go around, so we have to hunker down make sure we are okay in spite of everything else going around us. That there's a kind of constant competition at work for the scarce resources on our planet. And peace from this perspective is at best a break from that, a realization, again, an openness to the reality that we are all interconnected as children of God, made in God's image. And when we look into our neighbor, neighbor's eyes, we look into the eyes of Jesus. But Jesus gives differently to the world. There's no strings, strings attached. Jesus gives freely with no expectation of return, only the hope that, transformed by this peace, we might pass it on giving others the gift we have received. We all know, and I've talked about this before, an important part of our tradition as Anglicans is when we share the peace. The sharing of the peace is an act of anticipation, reconciliation, and preparation. And sadly, 
here these days, we can't sort of wander about as we've done and shake hands and give little hugs to people and whatnot. We do it from afar. But when we do so this morning, I want you to look into the eyes of your neighbor and say earnestly from your heart, may the peace of Christ be with you also. And then hear that line for yourself and receive that peace as a gift that we then take into our hearts and our souls and go into the world and share with those with whom we encounter every day. The peace of God be with you always. Thanks be to God. Amen.